What's happening, what's happening, what's happening? Of course, you know it's your boy, b Hard Radio, shout in, stepping in the building. I got an artist that's tearing up the streets right now as we speak. My Memphis fam in this thing. Yo. My friend, what's good with it, man? What it do, man? Hey, man, say, man. Yeah, I get mean, with ten... it, get out my way. Hey, the hey. visual is hard. The Appreciate song you. is going crazy as yes, hell, hey. man. I mean, break down that flavor. You kicking out here, bro. Yeah, man. Uh, like you said, man, my name is Mind Frame. You know, yeah. born and raised in Memphis, Tennessee. That's uh, right. Living in the Asheville. Nashville area now. Okay. Uh, but still, me and his head day all day till I die, man. Yeah. Uh, that song is going crazy, bro. And it's, it's hard not to, bro. It's, it's so catchy. And, and uh, a lot of other places say, hey, man, say, man. Exactly. But they don't know the root of it. Break it down. You know what I'm saying? They started from the end town, man. Oh, you know? Thanks. Yeah, This yeah. is big facts, man. Come on. You know, and it's different. It's different variations of Maine, but we, you know, we'll get into the whole lingo of some other time, bro. But uh, yeah, man, just just another ode to my city and yeah. uh, just another catchy song uh, as well. And just mine, just hot. It's I feel just that. hot, bro. I mean, frame. What was it that made you go from Memphis to Nashville, though, man? Long story, man. Uh, I graduated from uh, TSU, okay. uh, Tennessee State University. Yeah. Uh, shout out Big Blue. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, I was also in the military yeah. uh, at the time, fresh out of high school in the uh, Army Reserves or National okay. Guard. Uh, and my my unit was kind of up this way too as well. Uh, so once I graduated from college, I ended up just staying. Okay. Plus, uh, during my time at TSU, like I built up such a fan base from Nashville and Atlanta kind of area. Yeah. It just made sense to kind of stay, you know, up there. Not even just fan base wise, neither like. Just networking wise Thanks. and connections and stuff like that yeah. was so much, you know, building and already, you know, in the works already in Nashville. So it just made sense to, you know, start my roots there and keep going from there. Break down that music scene in Cashville, though, man, sure. because I mean, it's burgeoning and there's a lot of folks coming out of there right about now, it man. Is. So I mean, what the hell's going on up there? It's son? growing. Yeah. It, it's growing for sure. And it's long, long overdue. Okay. Uh, my, just the whole. State period, yeah. Uh, honestly, uh, but uh, it's getting better. You know, Memphis definitely been pumping out. Mm -hmm. Uh, but Nashville is definitely on its way because you know it's mainly known for you know country music, yeah, and stuff like that. That's the main thing that's, uh, you know, pumped and and glorified there. But the hip hop scene is is really coming alive and it's really dope. Uh, a lot of dope artists like myself, you know, living there around the area, yeah, and got a nice following and fan base. So. It's only going to be a matter of time. I'm with that. Now, I mean, strange change, man. You yeah. came with the live band on yeah, that thing, man. Yeah, Tiny Desk, yeah. What was it that made you go Tiny Desk? It's photo? crazy. It's crazy because I had always been wanting to do live band because, I mean, for me, bro, I like yeah. blues, soul music. That's what I was getting. Live instrumentation, yeah. all this stuff, like a part of my, you know, my whole matrix, you exactly. know, as an artist and how I love music and stuff. Yeah. And finally was just able to, you know, finally get it together and do it. And my uh, my homie was like, "Hey, bro, you don't submit this for the tiny desk." I knew mm -hmm. nothing about it. Yeah, yeah, nothing. I was like, "It's a competition." He was like, "Yeah, we should submit it." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, when the deadline?" And he literally told me like the day before the deadline. Yeah, yeah. So he was like, "With well, the deadline tomorrow night," and I was like, "Dang, <laughs> well, we need to get on top of this, then, huh?" Yeah, so yeah. we never rehearsed together. Yeah, nothing. Oh my we god. We just they listened to it a couple times. Everybody individually put it together. We ran through it maybe once or twice. Damn. Live tape, let's go. When I saw that, man, it was uh, reminiscent of the crit himself, man. Yeah, for sure. I mean, can you talk about him and the influence that he's had on your career? Oh, man. And uh, have you ever been able to come across him and pick his brain, man? For sure. Talk to him. Uh, oh, man, he's, he's a, a huge, huge influence like okay. on me musically. And not even just musically, but I would say... Like when you come out of the South and we got this vernacular, you know yeah. what I'm saying? They don't, they don't think they're like my outcasts back in the day. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They they constantly got overlooked because of the substance they was putting out. Exactly. And it kind of somewhat still happens to this day. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because the music now is mainstream, is punk, is you know this certain way. Yeah. But you know when it comes to the art of like you know dropping balls and being you know lyrical and storytelling and stuff like this sometimes it's easily overlooked for mm. you know what's cool catchy and yeah. and you know stuff like that but uh he he was he was a huge huge influence on me man just somebody from the south mm. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He from Meridian, Mississippi. I'm from Memphis, Tennessee. That's yeah. not even too far from each other. And just, I always had that, that love for it. I feel that. Now, mm-hmm. mind frame, I mean, being an artist in today's hip hop, though, man, I mm-hmm. mean, what is it like for you making sure that you put substance into your music at the same time and sure. making sure that you're still relevant to the culture mm-hmm. without having to be so gimmicky or right. going down the same lane as right. every damn body else? No, and, it's, and for me, it's super easy. Yeah. Because. I'm not, I'm not with the, you know, with the trend, with the trendy stuff. Yeah. I said the trend. So yeah. I always try to make sure I stay true to myself, who I am. Yeah. And once I, once I know and had it, that mentality and stay locked in that way, I'm always be able to do, you know what I'm saying, me. Yeah. But also still create and come out with, with dope stuff at the same time. Exactly. Even if, you know, I can switch it up on versatile, but. You know, for the most part, you know, I'm, I'm gonna sneak some lines in there. <laughs> I got to. That's just that's just my nature, man. I, exactly. I got to. Exactly. Yeah. Going to TSU and being in the military at the same mm-hmm. time, man. How do you feel like that impacted your artistry? A lot, man. Yeah. Uh, I do one by one. So for the military, mm-hmm. uh, just it just taught me really that that discipline. Yeah. Uh, organization. Mm-hmm. Uh, trusting in myself, having that confidence. Yeah. To you know not to be afraid or whatever else, and just and just taking the chance mm-hmm. um, and taking that shot, whether exactly. it's win, lose, or draw, because mm-hmm. there's they just come with life, they come with battle, they come with whatever. Yeah. So I took that them same principles and and still did into my music mm-hmm. in college. Uh, it helped me to you know learn how to, to party. Learn, yeah. <laughs> It, it helped me to, you know, learn how to come have on. fun. Conversations you know. with a player. You, you know. Come on now. Come on now. Yeah, yeah. It teaches me how to have fun, you know, yeah. not be serious, but don't take, you know, everything too, too serious, mm. you know? So did the military make you that damn serious? Oh, for sure. So what was that like, though, man, coming out of high school and then going Straight into in. the military? It was tough. How I'm did they break lie. you down? Were you broken all the way nah. down by the end of it or what? No, nah, I was already way too headstrong for that okay. anyway. So uh, my, my my no folk love me. Yeah. Like, I was a... Uh, I ran track all four years of high school. So okay. You was in shape. PT right. wasn't hitting on nothing. Okay. So they smoking everybody. Yeah. And uh, it's a quick little funny story. I'm here for everybody it. Everybody in there. Like, this probably like our first little week, our little hell week. And my everybody, in, we in like smoke. That's when everybody doing yeah. crazy exercise, crazy stuff. Yeah. And folks in there literally crying, tears, <laughs> throwing up. I already know. Peeing right, pee on they, everything. Oh, now they just doing too Look, much now. And I'm I'm literally like, I'm smiling and looking around like, this is crazy. Exactly. And one of the, uh, his name was Drillson Gray. I remember him to this day. He walked right past me and he seen me. And he said, what? We can't curse, we can curse on Yeah, say what you feel. He said, what the fuck you smiling at, uh, cat in the hat? <laughs> and I looked at him and I was like, Cat in the hat. Then yeah. you see if this big ass smile on your face, Dr. Seuss. Ooh. And I like, I'm just looking. He was like, yeah, that shit funny. And I said, yeah, then. And he said, all right. I said, I remember you. What's your name? <laughs> I, said, I remember you. And ever since then, every day, he'd be like, Dr. Seuss? Yeah. Good morning. I'm like, good morning, Jill. So. <laughs> but uh, it definitely, uh, it, it didn't break me down all the way because I was always a strong minded person. Yeah. Um, uh, I know what to, you know, what positives to take yeah. and what don't apply. You know, let that go over the shoulder. So After you finished with school, though, man, and having to navigate your own path from that mm-hmm. point forward, what was that like just having this whole world in front of you? You got the military behind you. You got school behind you. Yeah. What was it time to do then, man? Hit the ground running, and that's okay. exactly what I did. Yeah. Uh, my first uh, debut mixtape out the gate uh, mm-hmm. was Don't Mind Me, okay. hosted by uh, DJ Small, Southern Smoke. Yes, sir. And uh, that kind of way it really started man, for okay. me. So that was the game plan just to, all right, you know, if we're going to do it for real, let's do it for real. Exactly. So. I mean, when you talk about doing it for real, you're opening up for the likes of Currency and Project mm-hmm. Pat, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, what is it like hitting those stages before mm-hmm. those guards out there in the street? Bro, it's, it's a feeling like no other. And yeah. that's the second part of me. Like, mm. I just love doing it. I love performing, bro. It's, people always ask me all the time, like, are you nervous? And I be like, no. Nah. Exactly. Like, I be ready I to go. Work. Like, thank you. Exactly. It don't even be work. It just be, it's like my my euphoria. It's like my, 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 
my my home away from home. Like I feel, I feel like I'm meant to be there, mm -hmm. and I embrace that moment. And it's like some come over me and just take over me when it comes to that. And mm -hmm. I, I just love doing. Like I'm more nervous doing this. Yeah, oh, Honestly, hell no. I'm promise you, I'm, I'm wired weird like this. Yeah, but I'm more nervous just doing this mm -hmm. than a hundred to a thousand some people in yeah, the yeah. crowd. Like it don't be no nerve at all. My God. So, I mean, create a process, though, mind mm -hmm. frame. What is your mind frame when you go into that studio, man? Simple, bro. It's uh, my one. My, I got to have a, a talk with the most high. You mm -hmm. know, I pray. Um, and then just just think, man. Yeah. And go over, you know, what's been going on. What's something, you know, I can pull from and draw from mm -hmm. to, you know, help get these creative juices flowing. Uh, a lot of times it don't really come you know, like the floodgates open. You yeah. know, sometimes it's, you know, turn the faucet on here and there. <laughs> you get a little bit. You're the drip drop. Right. And exactly. then I just take from that, and then next thing I know, I just get in that mood, and I just build from that. Mm -hmm. So before you know it, one day I am I might have two or three lines, yeah. and then a week later I might have two or three songs already next now after that. Exactly. Uh, so, but doing that then in studio, uh, I'm one of them artists like my money, precious. So I try to go in there pre rehearsed. Or Come I want to know what's already. Hey, look, this is what we doing first. Exactly. Uh, we going to knock this out first, do this, and then do that. Like, I ain't going in there. To eat no wings and look crazy. <laughs> no, I ain't going there to smoke 80 blunts <laughs> and take 80 shots and then be sitting there. All right, you can go ahead and throw on the first beat now. Yeah. And you done been in there three hours. No. I, I, mean, I got to get in and get out. What was it that made you name yourself Mind Frame though? Mind Frame. Mm -hmm. I didn't get. I didn't name myself. Um, my homie. Uh, we was kind of like a duo back in the day in high school. Okay. Because I used to just do that all the time, just rap and freestyle and stuff at lunch and stuff all the time or whatever. And like, I gave my homie his uh name. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was trying to feel uh think of a different name because it was like something like crazy. It was like Baller B or something <laughs> like that. Then it was, and then I didn't want to do, because at that time, everybody was young, something. Yeah. And I was like, I don't want to do that. Yeah. So I just wanted something, you know, authentic and something that was actually me. Yeah. And something I can actually, you know, grow to love and actually cherish and stuff. So this one day we was leaving lunch, we was walking back to uh, class. And my mom was like, he's like, bro, I just really like, he said, it don't be just like, how what you race, I like how you rap. Mm. He's like, oh, right before you finna start. Yeah. He said, because it's like, bro, when he, when they finna pass to you, he was like, you close your eyes mm -hmm. and you be nodding your head like yeah. this. And he said, you be, he said, it's like you be thinking deeply in your mind frame about what you're going to say and how you're going to say it. Mm. And then we both, as soon as he said it, we real talk, we both looked at each other like. That's it? That's it. <laughs> and it, since that day, I've been mind frame. Answer me this, though, mind frame. How do you feel about the state of hip hop right now, man? I mean, you know, we just went into a, a battle symphony in this man. thing. Everybody's mad. Everybody's battling now. Look. Folks is cussing each other out online. Yeah. Folks is making music about each other. Yeah. How do you feel about the state that we're in uh, right now, man? Pride friend? disclaimer. Don't nobody come after me. I ain't choosing no side <laughs> between Drake and K Dot. Yeah. I'm fans of Bo. That's right. So, hey. Uh, I'm going to just put that out there first. Yeah. But that aspect, to an extent, I loved it, you know, just because, you know, I'm a, I'm a huge battle rap fan as well, too. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, when it comes to stuff like that, like, that piques my interest and stuff, too. So that was cool for the culture at the same time. Yeah. But also, on that same token, it had me thinking, like, like why we got to do why, – why, why we got to do that? Mm. Like, we don't – we don't only – only real genre that kind of do that. Yeah. And I know that's in our roots and stuff, yeah. but as far as, like, industry-wise and success-wise and trying to, you know, do something bigger. Yeah. Because, like, what, what, like, could you think of a of a K-Dot, Drake, and J. Cole joint album mm. and how That would have broke the net, too. That would have broke the net, too. How big that would have been. You just snapped with that mind frame. <laughs> Like that would have been no, crazy. You just with that. It's the truth. It's the huge truth. That would have been crazy. A so, three, uh, even a tour from that. Come on. That would have been crazy. I mean, with that being said, though, mind frame. What is it that keeps you from going down the drill route 
where everybody else is at right now too, man. And just really sticking to your guns and mm -hmm. creating your own style of music yeah. and just being versatile at the same time. The same thing again, just being true to me and being my authentic self. And and the main goal is to continue to try to make something timeless, bro. Yeah. Like how you bought up Strange Change. Like that's been Strange Change been out for years. Yeah. And people still discovering it, finding it, yeah. hearing it, seeing it, and going, hey, man, I like this song. It's hard. Nice. And I'm like, it, it's something about seven, eight years old. And they be like, what? And I'm like, yeah. So, my friend, you've been putting it down for seven, eight years, man? Ten plus. Okay, so mind frame, what is going through your mind frame to keep you staying down for ten plus, brethren? I love it, man. And Talk I'm to constantly me. I'm constantly getting better and better. Exactly. I'm constantly growing, I'm progressing. And I think that's that's what it is, man. Have there ever been any times though where Plenty. your mind frame Plenty. was getting a little weak and you was Plenty. like, Why am I doing this, man? Plenty. So what do you do during them times though, man? That's when I like lean into you know, everybody else, my true, like, true homies, fans, supporters, mm -hmm. uh, family. Yeah. Uh, my God, and stuff like that, man. Cause I and he'll do it he'll do it himself. Yeah. Cause I get into them to them spots, uh, not a lot, but I've been through them quite quite some time. Yeah. But he'll he'll sprinkle me a little reminder here and sprinkle there. Sprinkle me, man. Yeah. And be like, Oh yeah, <laughs> sprinkle me, man. <laughs> sprinkle me, man. He'll hit me every now and again and be like, hey, bro. Yeah. Calm down. Yeah. And somebody be like, hey, bro, you hard. And it be somebody I don't even know. Exactly. Hey, bro, I heard about you. I seen you. Yeah. I remember you from this show uh, two years ago or something, bro. Yeah. You still you still doing it? I be like, yeah. And I was like, yeah, bro, keep going. And I be exactly. like, exactly. Pit. So now, my friend, coming out of Memphis, though, man, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, Memphis is one of the hot spots for hip-hop yes, right sir. now as we speak. How do you feel about that? And then also at the same time, you know, it can get kind of rough in Memphis at the same time. And yeah. so how do you feel about the danger and the hip-hop in Memphis? Oh, uh, the hip-hop-wise, I love it. Mm -hmm. uh, I love it. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see plenty from my city, you know what I'm saying, making it to them types of level of success, mm -hmm. you know, still and continuously, um, for sure. Like this, um, I'm, 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 I'm loving that part of it because I mean, that's you know, that's what I'm trying to do. That's right. You know, what I'm saying I'm trying to be, you know, one of them ones that be like, hey, he, he from the M too, and look at him now, like exactly. he can do it, you can do it too. Damn right. You know, so, um, uh, and the danger part of it. I don't really like to focus on that part because so many other folks do. Yeah. I try to, I try to show the beauty of my shit. I try to show the, the gifts of my shit. I try to show the talent of my shit. I try to show the soul yeah, yeah. and the and the love and all the beautifulness of my city as much as I can. I try to push the positive side of my city because regardless of that aspect of it, because I mean it's everywhere, you know, but it's it's a lot there. Yeah, but yeah. uh, and it's mainly televised, televised and talked about though. Yeah. Uh, so I just try to do my part to my shift that narrative. When it comes to controlling that narrative yourself, though, man, mm -hmm. and keeping it as a positive and peaceful narrative, how do you feel like hip hop reacts to that? Because I know you said earlier that you feel mm -hmm. like it gets overlooked a yeah. lot, man. And then what do you think has to take place in order for you to be able to break through to the masses? Um, that's a good question, bro. Me personally, it's it's this for me. Though I do want to be, you know what I'm saying, talked about or, you know, verified, even though I don't seek validation from just my city, mm -hmm. I don't just make music yeah. for my city. I'm bigger than it. Yeah. I make music for everybody. Come on. So, and I think that's, that's the other part of it that continues to keep me, you know, going and driving as well because, you know, that shows. I have fans and, you know, supporters and followers from, you know, not just from Memphis, not yeah. just from my city, but from other places. That's right. So I just try to continue to keep that mindset. Like, you know, my, my purpose is bigger than just my city. Yeah. I ain't trying to be the, the best or the hardest out, out of Memphis. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to, you know, I'm going past it. Come on now. I wanna don't don't I don't wanna limit myself to just my city. I wanna be one of the hardest out the South, one of the hardest out the world. That's right. 
So I think that's what it is for me. I just try to keep that mindset and that mentality when it comes to it. Uh, I wish that part would stop, though, the yeah. danger and the, you know, the hating and the killing and everything. And yeah. I feel like what could help change that would be, uh, you know, more unity, more people un- unifying themselves and instead of using they, they success to, you know what I'm saying, tear the next person down. I so. feel that. Now, I mean, during your journey, though, mind frame, I mean – what has been your favorite part of it so far? Because, see, we talked about the times that you was like, you know what, I don't know. Yeah. What about the times you was like, hell yeah, we on the right track of this thing, man? Yeah, plenty. It's been plenty of times. And what's on your the right favorite track. one? My favorite, uh, at the city? But with just your career, your journey, that you done had a good time, you performing, folks is going crazy. It was probably, I think, I'd have to say the, the two of the like, best shows I probably had. Was Bone Thugs and Harmony. Mm. Uh, that was a great show and great day. Yeah, that was the first day I, uh, you know, launched my merchandise. Okay, so that was the first. Uh, that was the first show I was able to, you know, set up and sell that mm. and stuff like that, and did great. First time I even signed an autograph Damn. was at that show. Yeah, yeah. Like random, uh, random dude walked up to me, passed me his hat, and a sharp and said, "Can you sign this for me?" Mm. I said, yeah. "Huh." <laughs> I said, can, can I get your autograph? And I said, you know I'm not one of the bone thugs and harmony, right? <laughs> and he started laughing just like that. He said, no, I know. You mind from him. You just got off the stage. And my little ad lib is shit chair. And he was like, shit, shit chair. Yeah, exactly. And I was like, okay. And I was like, yeah. I signed it for you, bro. And then he bought like two or three shirts. But I was God. like, man. I was like, okay. And then I think after that would be my in-town legend, my project pet. Project Pat. Project Pat, man. That show was so live. Show live. Did you get a chance to holler at Pat? For sure. Okay, what was that conversation sure. like, my friend? Man, I gave him some uh I gave him some of my shirts. I went back there. So I went in the little back room after I got through. Yeah. And the uh, first person I seen was Young Buck. <laughs> what up, though, Buck? Yeah. And I ain't even seen him. He saw me first. And he was like, hey yo. Yeah. He said, You took it out of the stage, didn't I? I said, Yeah, and I'm Say said, Buck, what the fuck you doing here, man? Yeah. He was like, man, you killed that shit. And I'm like, you shady, man. Exactly. And I slid on over the pet, and I was like, bro. Yeah. So it really wasn't a lot of him saying stuff to me. It was really me just giving him his flowers, bro. That's real. Like, that was the first and foremost thing I wanted to do. I was like, I introduced myself, told him, you know, hey, I'm mine from him as well. Yeah. And, of course, if any any men here know, after you say that, I'm like, what part? <laughs> so I told him, I'm like, I'm from North Memphis. He North, said, oh, okay. North. He said, where? I said, well, I'm from Frazier. Oh. He said, what? He said, you know, he said, what you know about that? I said, yeah. I know all about that. Oh, man. He, was like, he said, you know, that's where I'm from the back, too. I said, I know. Exactly. He said, okay, what part? I was like, man, Mount Tears. Yeah. Man, so the sunrise. He was like, oh, he said, Okay. Yeah. He said, you valid then. Exactly. And he was like, man, look good. Uh, and I told him, you know, I was like, man, I just want to let you know, bro, you you been so influential over the past few decades, bro. Yeah. Like, I still bump. Get it green. Like, he just came mm. out. What? Mr. Don't Play. Don't I still all? watch mine. Come on. So, and I'm just telling him all that. And then I was like, I just want to, you know, give you these shirts and, uh, you know, just tell you, bro, like, you've been one of the main, like, artists. Like, because he was one of them ones, too. Like, yeah. He had a, a different style. Exactly. But he was still a great storyteller. Exactly. And still had some stuff, some substance and content. Hell yeah, he did. At the same time of keeping, you know what I'm saying, keeping it true to his lifestyle. Mm-hmm. So that was that was something else that showed me like it's possible. Mm-hmm. It can be done. And play a fly another one. Like he might Oh uh, yeah. He might, he yeah. might like top top. Like exactly. And like he he big on it too. So yeah. but I was just telling him then and he uh and I had to say that to him too, man. Another thing, he gave me a gift in return, mm. and I wasn't expecting it. Yeah. But he uh, he told me, he said, man, just keep going. He said, man, keep God first. And he said, and I can tell. He said, I can already tell and see it in you. He said, but I got something for you too. He gave me this book, mm. and uh, I still been reading. I actually got it. I got it with me in my backpack yeah. downstairs. So uh, he said, man, he said, I know the. He said, I see the light in you. He said, but if you finish and read this book. He said, he said, I can tell you already got it in you. He said, but if you read this book, he said, bro, you're going to be unstoppable. Mm. He said, so just read this. 
He said, take take heed to it. And he said, watch. Exactly. And he said, keep doing what you're doing. Coming out of Frazier, though, man. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of greats that came out of Frazier as yeah. well. Yeah, Frazier, so, I mean, Boyle, Wyatt. Exactly. What is yeah. it in that water around there that just makes right. that, you it's know, the whole city, yeah. bro. Yeah. It's really the whole city. It's just so much. It's just so much talent there, bro. But all they get overlooked. Yeah. Because of everything else. I feel that. Like, it is, this is how it is. And mm-hmm. we've been, we been, you know, known and been been a you know stamped in the game way you know way way back you know for blues rock and roll and soul music and stuff and it's still so so deep like yeah. even though that was so long ago it's still so much dirt still yeah and like that's all we constantly doing we just reaching back soaking it up and then taking it to the time that we in now and exactly. how it go in, in different, you know, steps yeah, yeah. and just making it into something else. So that's why we constantly growing and constantly still relevant. I feel that. I mean, moving forward though, my frame, what the fans need to know, what we working on, what we got my, coming look, up, sir? Uh, we got something out right now. Talk to uh, me. Just dropped, uh, what's this, uh, May? So end of uh, March, yeah. uh, I just wanted to come out with another little project mm-hmm. uh, just to you know, put out there and, sh- and show my own growth and versatility some more as well. Yeah. Uh, and that's what a project and it's called, man, Mind Over Metal. That's right. So uh, drop that. Uh, numbers is looking pretty nice. That's right. On it right now. Yeah. So uh, y'all go check that out on all all streaming uh, platforms, Mind Over Metal. Just type in the name Mind Frame and uh, Mind Over Metal and it'll definitely show up. So just quick little 10 song. Uh, next we got coming out of... Uh, we gonna have some more, you know, content pushing out. So That's right. music videos, uh, things of that nature, um, uh, clothing line I have as well. Merchandise yeah. uh, that I do for my own brand for Mind Frame, and then my clothing line is uh, ABK Double L D, but okay. that stands for Airborne Kings Lifelong Dream That's Clothing. That's all. Right. That's all. Right. So uh, and it's basically a. Uh, you know, to help everybody remember whether, you know, male or female, you still royalty. That's you right. know what I'm saying? And you born that way. Come on. So, you know, always stay true to that. Um, so it's just a, a, ba- a basic urban, you know, brand. We do T-shirts, hoodies, you know, hats, things of that nature. So, uh, and it's doing great. So hopefully to, 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 to you know, make that bigger and mm-hmm. continue to grow from that. Uh, having my own, uh, me and my bro finna start our own podcast and then me having my own kind of interview you know one-on-one show as well is in the works as well too okay, so then. definitely trying to man, branch out and continue to grow and uh you know keep giving them what they want and keep being mind frame at the end of the day okay so now with that being said though mind frame how can these folks contact you though man if they try to get in yeah. contact with you to run something for sure and you can definitely hit me up on all social media and that's at thank god i'm frame mm-hmm. that's thank god i am frame f-r-a-m-e and also they can check out my website thank god i'm frame.com uh, email me at uh abk management at mm-hmm. gmail.com so there's many plenty of ways to to get in contact with the kid uh definitely uh most shows be on the way uh all that man we working man so when you thinking about working though, mind frame, I mean, what's your favorite part of the whole grind, man? I like I said, the whole my favorite part I ain't gonna lie, it, it be the performing for sure. Mm-hmm. But that's not necessarily just there. Is is to me, and this how my mind work. Like I like going into, especially like new spaces and new places, mm-hmm. and like. I guess you could say that's my competitive nature. Yeah, in sometimes a way we got to compete. So I go in and, you know, try to make mental notes of who all giving that weird vibe and that energy and, like, you know, I don't, you know. Yeah. And I'd be like, oh, okay. Bit, bit. Cool bit. <laughs> bit. Bit. And then <laughs> go do the show and... I don't care. I'm finna pop it. I said I was gonna start. Go ahead, it up. man. You got to, Frank. So, a lot of folks don't be doing how I be doing right now, bro. Mm-hmm. And and it be my folks be still out there performing over the tracks and stuff like that. When now when you get you know five to ten artists that's doing it, mm-hmm. everybody gonna be like, okay, yeah, cool. But then Frame hit this thing. Mm. And Frame ain't rapping over the vocal. Frame actually performing. Yeah. Stage presence 
on one thou wow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Charisma going. Exactly. Handsome as ever. <laughs> you know? Just giving that energy. And then it just be it it really blow my mind. But also I be kind of feeding off of it when I get off this stage. Yeah, yeah. And I'm saying people who's acting funny and distant. Yeah, yeah. Be the first ones coming up. Hey, bro. Come on. We hey, love man. you. That was hard, You bro. killed that, man. Hey. Yeah, yeah. Hey, that was hard, bro. I'm like, I appreciate <laughs> you, bro. I thank you, bro. I can dig it. Yeah, but it's all love, though. I know. Uh, I know how it is. It is competitive, man. Everybody and their mama trying to rap, so I feel it, and I get exactly. it, and I understand it. Uh. But at the same time, you know, I, I get creative when it's due too. And I make sure I show that love and then support back to others too. Exactly. So they know I ain't no, you know what I'm saying? I ain't no funny dude or I ain't got no hatred or nothing like that. Like, Come it's on. all love for me. Facts. And, I, and I'm willing to work, you know, with any and everybody uh, as well. So I just try to put that, that good energy in the air yeah. so I can always get it in return. Lastly, Frame, once again, how can these folks contact you? And is there anything else you want to let your fans know for you slide, boss? Oh, uh, man, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. Thank God, bro. Thank Come you on. for having me, man. Appreciate you coming uh, through this thing, man. And for letting me to be on here and do this, man. Big fan of your work, too. Like I said, thank I just you. Thank watch you. some of your interviews. You be having me tripping, bro. <laughs> Um, we cut up in this thing. Y'all do, bro. Y'all okay. have fun. It's a, and it's a good, fun environment, bro. Yeah, like, And yeah. I like I like interviews like that. And I like your questions, too, bro. Uh, Thank you. Because a lot of people ask them same regurgitated ones. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I appreciate that. No problem. Uh, but again, man, thankgodimframe.com. Uh, at thankgodimframe, all social media. Uh, tap in, follow me, hit me up. Um, like I said, Mind Over Matter is out now. All streaming platforms, Spotify, Tidal, Apple Music, um, all the above. Uh, music videos for some of my newer songs like Unknown, Unknown, uh, Find Me from Mind Over Matter is going crazy right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, so all this on the way, man. Just just more and more content and uh, new uh, new drops from the clothing line. Airboy King's Lifelong Dreams is on the way. Okay. If you like to, you know, find some or look at some stuff, purchase some stuff. That's on thankgodonframe.com. You know, just go to the shop, and it'll be two different, you know, sections. You can click on the mind frame for the merchandise or the clothing line link for all the clothing line items. Um, and yeah, man. And also, man, no homo, but what size you wear? I got large. a little gift for you, for sure. Yeah, I'm here for it. For sure. Uh, po- ho- hoodie, extra large, t-shirt, t-shirt large. large. For sure. I'm here for it. Mind frame, sure. my dog. Appreciate, Appreciate you, Appreciate you coming through this thing, man. Wish you nothing but the best and much success. Be high ready, yo, shout it. Mind frame. Holla at y'all in a minute, man. Yeah. We gone.